educational systems have been completely disrupted and transformed and the entire ecosystem whether it's learners whether it's parents whether it's teachers whether it's the uh, administration in those educational institutions or even b2c edtech players who are addressing the larger um, learning opportunity their roles have changed completely um, there are also newer um, you know tools and technologies like ai enabled chatbots virtual learning environments which are being now used to engage learners but at the same time you know there are a lot of challenges around how do you keep people motivated disciplined engaged how do you manage um, you know the stress of i remember when we were growing up or even uh, when we were in college or if you're doing professional upskilling you know that whole uh, commodity of of just being with your um, you know classmates in a in a classroom environment talking uh, to to them discussing with them debating with them that whole environment and ambiance is something which you simply cannot replicate in a completely online environment but even when things are starting to improve now a lot of people feel and believe strongly that the blended learning model is here to stay and we may not uh, ever go back to the traditional physical only sort of environment which uh, most of us have been used to while growing up and also at the same time it's very important to look at some of the mental um, well being related factors around this because it creates a lot of stress when you cannot uh, interact with others while learning and um, you know you can only see your peers or teachers in a passport size photograph um, you know in, in these zoom sessions it's just not the same and sometimes um, you know all of us are different there are a lot of people who are who have developed um, you know mental conditions around uh, you know not anxiety some people are not comfortable even um, you know being on on videos or audio so there are a lot of Uh, issues around learning and a lot of infrastructural uh, constraint as well uh, in our country which leads to a lot of stress so today's session uh, you know we are so lucky to have such a diverse panel uh, who would cover almost all of these points which i mentioned about and probably some more and of course as audience um, you have all always been a very proactive and and participative audience in all the ima session so i'm sure if you're going to extract maximum value from these extreme speakers who have been so kind uh, to spare time and be with us on a friday evening um, so before you know without further ado i'm going to uh, you know uh, formally welcome all the guest speakers of the evening today so we have got today uh, with us miss kunjan uh, lal chandani she is the head strategy and growth at hero wired she has got over 15 years of uh, industry experience Gunjan has had um, you know strategic consulting experience across various sectors and she also has got experience of working in senior leadership roles across some of the well well known startups in our country like Zomato uh, her own entrepreneurial experience also includes uh, you know launching a learning app which was targeted towards the test prep market she loves building and growing businesses from scratch and she is also a passionate educationist herself um she is a engineer from the prestigious uh, nsit engineering school and she has done her mba from faculty of management studies uh, new delhi so a very warm welcome to you gunjan uh, we are so privileged to to have you with us today thank you kartik for the kind words uh, uh, good evening everyone it's my pleasure to be here today with all of you thank you thanks uh, next we have with us dr nivedita shrivastava Uh, she is one of our key pillars she is one of the founder members and a, a, you know a, a sort of a guiding light if you will to all of us here at uh, aima yc um, you know she is also a business psychologist at nine links the assessment company she is a qualified psychologist and psychometrician which i would need to need her to explain later on what as a psychometrician do and she has got a vision to develop the employability uh, for the youth of the country which is such a big problem especially in the current crisis uh, you know how do we make our youth more skill skillable more employable she is solving that problem and uh, she also has got a lot of passion in in writing music and traveling uh, we are uh, so happy to see you again uh, dr nivedita and i'm sure uh, your uh, words of wisdom are going to be more uh, you know tailored towards helping manage the entire stress and anxiety um, around the current situation and um, i know you also have and i'll invite you shortly you also have a very interesting presentation which you will uh, kick us off with which i am sure everybody is going to find uh, very interesting thank you dr nivedita for for being with us today 
very very words from you thank you so much thanks and uh, the next we have with us is shreyans bhandari who is also one of our uh, esteemed ylc member he is the ceo and co-founder of green school green soul and director of heritage girl school uh, shreyans uh, has done his masters in entrepreneurship leadership uh, graduation from babson college us um, he is also an alumnus of jehan college mumbai and mayo college ajmer he is an ardent marathon runner and has authored uh, a book called birds of aravlis in association with rajasthan tourism and bnhs india he also is a regular speaker at various environmental and um, entrepreneurship forums including uh, the ones at harvard kennedy school us babson college mit wharton and tedx uh, youth wso dubai uh, shreyansh is also very passionate uh, about his vision of bridging the social uh, economic and environmental gap through green soul uh, which is a company that uh, refurbishes discarded uh, shoes to comfortable footwear Uh, while creating an infrastructure which enables everyone to have this basic necessity of footwear forever his venture green soul has received uh, appreciation letters from uh, former president barack obama uh, and sir ratan tata and he has also been featured in uh, forbes bloomberg vogue bbc among others he is the director of heritage uh, girls school which is a prestigious girls residential school in udaipur with cbsc and cambridge four the school is ranked among top 10 girl boarding schools in india by education today we are uh, really uh, privileged to have shyans uh, you know uh, you know you with us today uh, so thank so you god to you i think the Thanks. look forward to the discussion and also to learning from the other speakers and people part of the audience thank you thanks thanks shyans and i would also like to acknowledge uh you know shishadri puram institute of management studies bangalore uh, and we have got more than 200 students from um, sims bangalore joining us today so special uh, thanks to the entire student community who has joined us for this session today thank you so um, you know so before i kick off uh, may i invite uh, dr nivedita if you can share uh, the very interesting presentation note you have to sort of kick start this Uh, in a very interesting manner so over to you dr nivedi sure uh, thanks kartik uh, kartik just wanted to check with you just in case if i am sharing the screen uh, will i be able to uh, read the messages and the chats as well just in case i put put yeah, yeah, yeah. a question yeah i'll be able yes. to do that right because yes. i think with the some other uh, um, online tools i think that's not possible so anyway which is that's fine sure yes you can do it all right sure uh, so i think uh, this is visible yes we can see your screen yeah but you can maybe do it in full screen mode yeah Sure, that's better. Yeah, perfect, perfect. All right, sure. So, uh, as I can see, that there's a mixed group of uh, students and faculty. So, it's going to probably be a roller coaster ride of memories for some uh, senior professors out here that I can see, and certain other senior professions that I can see amongst the crowd, so amongst the you know audience. So, I think uh, it should uh, appear to be interesting for both uh, the. Uh, the student fraternity as well as the fraternity of uh, professionals so uh, we are trying to just uh, bring about some uh, you know a different perspective to the whole issue of how do we uh, you know enhance learning in the online environment and how do we kind of uh, uh, move ahead with that so uh, yeah so if we have to look into how uh, communication used to be so many of us can relate to this famous scene uh, which is from the movie uh, you know a classic movie that we have which is uh, many pyar kiya i'm sure many of us would still be loving this movie and uh, of course when we can relate to it so of course uh, the whole idea of putting up this picture here is that communication in the yester years used to be through uh, pigeons and uh, one used to take uh, you know it used to take uh, days all together from uh, for a message to reach from one part of the uh, you know country or one part of the world to reach to the other part of the world so that's how uh, communication used to be in yester years or uh, you know centuries all together 
then of course uh, we can also relate to this uh, song you know uh, which comes from a very old classic i don't know which movie it is but i'm sure a very uh, famous song that we have mere piya gaye rangun wahan se kiya hai teleport so that's how communication has uh, transformed from right from using pigeons as messengers to telephone and now uh, the scenario is such that we have got used to something that's called instant messaging and we expect messages to be responded to and at times of course it's a chaos and it's a panic if we do not receive the blue tick marks and uh, you know if we do not receive instant responses to our messages so that's how the communication has uh, changed over years and over centuries right uh yes and the other perspective i think uh, you know the uh, the old saying as it says that uh, man is a social animal so of course uh, um, you know the pre pandemic situation was very different and uh, and also the situation has turned around very differently now wherein uh, uh, we can we can actually see uh, the jain viru friendship as an epic friendship uh, you know pair and uh, now we make friends globally through various other uh, apps and uh, you know websites such as facebook and uh, you know other websites so of course that's where uh, you know uh, the situation has changed right from making friends in jail from jain viru to making global friends without even seeing each other we make friends and we make connection on linkedin and uh, facebook without even having met people even once forget uh, having bonded with them on a face to face uh, basis uh yes the third perspective that i would like to bring is we have uh, muna bhai mbbs who used to sit in a whole uh, classroom of you know 500 students and uh, get and used to struggle to somehow get to the medical um, college so that's where uh, we stand with the traditional classrooms about you know about 10 years back and now the world has changed of course thank uh, you know uh, maybe i don't know if you could want to call it as a blessing in disguise but yes now learning is just a click away so that's how uh, you know the learning models have also changed uh, the question that i would like to pose to the audience maybe as just a nice breaker is uh, which is that skill that we see as a common skill amongst all the three situations whether it was uh, communication through different channels whether it was a pigeon or through telephones or instant messaging or uh, you know making friends uh, over years to making friends globally even without having met them even once or uh, you know or uh, being you know learning in a traditional classroom to online learning so which is that skill that uh, is common amongst all three situations so is there i mean you could write in the chat bot and since i can't uh, so there so i'll right. read it out uh, dr nivita so somebody yeah, saying communication can, can uh, communication yeah. listening okay. emotion right. connecting for communication precision sorry which was the last one that you said precision precision okay okay learning more that's coming up learning learning okay. digital communication uh, subject still looking for the right one <laughs> still looking not for the right answer interaction all right any interpersonal right? skills anything else that's coming up all right to quite close to that i presentation think. skills anything else maybe one last. presentation skills presentation understanding skills, understanding, right. understanding dedication sharing information okay. that's the closest, that's the closest i think uh, whoever has said understanding or uh, you know interpersonal skills so i think uh, as per my opinion connecting and, uh, you know, so somebody said skills, connecting is, okay okay all right okay. adapting okay. to change sure so i think oh that's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> so that's the right answer and i think 100% marks goes to the person who just says who just said adapting to change mahesh and, r uh, yes. is the audience member who said adapting yeah. to change so that's uh, adaptation and here adaptation is also kind of uh, could be used as agility or but it's not here agility as uh, being agile or flexible like akshay kumar uh, in terms of uh, you know physical agility or like uh, tiger shroff in the current days and days but we are talking about mental or uh, uh, you know flexibility or situational adaptability and uh, that's what is the need of the hour i think and uh, you know to be adaptable and to be flexible enough to change uh, you know in a way to react well to you know the upcoming situations we never know what is awaiting in the future and uh, some of the top 10 21st century skills are the top most is adaptability as we can see the second the next few are self awareness digital fluency communication collaboration empathy analysis or solution mindset resilience again is very critical 
and entrepreneurial mindset and social or diversity awareness. But to top it all, I think the topmost is adaptability, which is what we set everything else in place. So everything else follows if we are flexible enough. And that's where I think will take us to the future and it would lead us to your situation that dear future, I'm ready for you. So since we don't know what is awaiting us in the next you know, decade or the next year. So I think adaptability is the key to you know, any kind of situation, whether it be traditional classrooms or learning online or something that's blended. So I think that's a message that I wanted to kind of pass on. Sure. Right. Thanks, Dr. Niveta. And I think uh, that's pretty much sums it from a perspective of context setting, right? I mean, we cannot be absolutely sure of what's going to happen in the future. So it's, it's an important skill to be ready to face anything that happens in the future. Which brings me to uh, Gunjan. Gunjan, how does one know in, in current times that what's really worth learning and, and what's worth upscaling for? And, uh, you know, at a 30,000 feet from where you sit, where do you see the future of learning evolving into? And how does one uh, make sure that they are investing the time in learning the right things to be more future-proof, if you will? Yeah, thank you for the question, Kartik. Uh, and thanks, Dr. Nivedita. The presentation was uh, very interesting. Um, uh, so, Kartik, um, you know, I, I will break up the future of education into, into two parts, according to me, right? One is in the context of online learning that we are talking about. And then I'll come to the entire upskilling question that you asked as well. I think, of course, um, you know, we've all been talking about it. We've all, um, you know, kind of experienced it over, over the last year, how uh, learning was in a pre-pandemic world, how learning is today, and now how learning is going to be a few years down the line once we're out of this pandemic, uh, right? I think these are three very, very different experiences altogether, the way I look at it. One, of course, we know uh, how, how things were in the pre-pandemic world. You know, while online education was introduced uh, many years ago, right? what we call edtech, online education. It has been there for many years. Uh, but the kind of adoption to online learning that has happened in the last year, year and a half, right, is significantly different. Um, because we've all been forced to move online. We've all been forced to see what works online. What are the advantages of online learning? Can we actually utilize them to our benefit, right? Um, and which is how now in the current world, obviously, online learning has become, become super critical. Um, the way I look at it is the future, right, is going to be a combination of blended learning, like you very rightly said, Karthik, right? Because I think both online and offline learning bring its own set of advantages with itself, right, uh, which are not, not possible to replace. So, for example, rightly so, in an offline setup, the kind of personal connect, the kind of network, you know, um, uh, that interaction that was there in an offline world, um, you know, is of course uh, very valuable. But however, when we look at online learning, it brings its own set of advantages and benefits. Um, you know, the kind of convenience and comfort of working, uh, of uh, learning from home, the kind of, uh, um, you know, experience of um, learning at your own pace, customization, personalization, which is possible in an online setup, uh, which may not be possible uh, in an offline kind of learning setup. And I think over the last year, year and a half, there's been a lot of innovation which has happened on online learning across various, um, you know, across various sectors, across schools, universities, ed tech, everywhere. And I think I think the, a combination of online learning and offline learning, where we are able to figure out the best of both worlds, right, which is what we call as blended learning, uh, is to my mind going to be, be the future as far as, um, you know, kind of how we learn um, is going to change, right? Now to come to the second question, Karthik, in terms of upskilling, again, a very relevant question, because I think that is, again, one thing which has really changed today is how do we look at learning and education, right? Uh, learning and education is no more a one-time activity today, right? Uh, because of the way the job roles are changing in the industry, the way technology has come in, in each and every sector, and it has changed the way we look at things. It's changed the way industries operate, right? Um, and, and that's exactly the reason why there is today a large skill gap sitting out there in the market. You know, when you actually look at the kind of job roles which are there in the market, the kind of job roles which the industry requires, a lot of times don't match with the kind of skill sets, um, you know, we have uh, in the professionals, whether they're freshers, professionals, et cetera. And the, 
pure reason for that is because the job roles are moving so fast that are we able to adapt as fast to that changing environment right as the industry actually requires um you know like terms like data science artificial intelligence machine learning these are very new to many of us but today if you actually go in the market look at the industry uh, those are the jobs which are which are really available in the market right those are the kind of skill sets which the industry requires uh, and not only it let's pick up any traditional sector also pick up a healthcare pick up a finance pick up a logistics right how has technology changed the way each of these sectors operate right uh, and hence the reason the, the requirement of upskilling um, you know constantly has increased a lot because of uh, the way job roles are moving right and this is this is only going to increase as we go along because the technology is moving faster um, you know um, more innovation is happening globally more job roles are changing really fast the skill sets that we require are changing um, very fast and and i agree with dr nivedita that those some of those soft skills critical thinking all of that all of those pieces are very important um, but along with that what we need to do is co constantly upskill ourselves and learn what what new things what new skill sets what new technical skills are required in the in the in the market today so today you may need machine learning or a python or tomorrow we may have an ar vr which might come in 3d printing which will uh, come in right um game design for example so many of these sectors are really seeing a significant change for which we need to constantly constantly i think upskill ourselves and constantly learn uh, so that to me is 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 one of the biggest changes um, you know which have happened and which is the future that no more can we learn once and we are done we need to learn to unlearn learn again upskill ourselves constantly to be successful and i think whether it is whether whether we are trying to find a new job in the market or whether um, you know you want to change your existing career or whether you want to be successful in your own existing company right uh, upskilling is critical for everyone now for example if if somebody in in a logistic sector or a healthcare sector today right if they don't understand how technology is being used um, even even as traditional as logistics uh, you know automated warehousing how we use technology how we use robotics many of things these things are coming so for for you to constantly be aware of and learn some of these things i think to move up the ladder is is very very critical right and i think uh, we also got some interesting um, statements from some of our audience members like dr jolly sani is talking that you know lifelong learning is is going to be the key and people will have to be more self driven you know typically we grow up and maybe shreyans can and throw light on that we are grown in that model where somebody teaches us there is a discipline around learning but now with online it's it's more about the onus is on you uh, to learn right you have to be self driven and and shreyans uh, you know since you are also uh, dabbling with formal education so perhaps the other area which many of us would like to know that and and this is one question which many people ask me that can everything be learned online or there are elements or subjects or things which you cannot learn uh, online and it requires physical intervention so what can be learned online that's one and the second aspect is we have seen how the role of teachers and facilitators have completely changed and many of the teachers who have you know started teaching in 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 pre covid era uh, it's it's a sea change for them to be able to deliver uh, learning in an online environment i know some of them who are so good in traditional uh, teaching space they are completely uh, you know uh, feeling the heat when they have to deliver it in in such a format right so uh, how do you see that transition happening and maybe if there are any interesting case studies or examples from your school in udaipur which you want to share with us uh, i think that's something which would be uh, really insightful shyans yes definitely so uh, it was a surprise for all of us the way we had to shift to online learning everything from physical classes moved to zoom google meet we had to select which was the best platform but ultimately we were able to do a lot of things which we thought uh, couldn't be done online like in the mornings we have yoga classes for the students and uh, then we had tedx talk which was hosted online mun lot of workshops which were hosted 
and for a boarding school it's even more challenging because we have to deliver even more than a day school we are looking at overall development of a child so to maintain that interest in the children we we had them write back to us like you know even if we are uh, taking the classes online you have to write down the assignment and courier it to us so that the habit of writing down things of interacting with the teachers of interacting with the school is intact also uh, we made the classes a lot fun like like teachers uh, may ask a few student to do some activities like sing a song or if you want put some fun filter and we also tried uh, that everyone wears a uniform while attending the online classes because you know you could be doing multitasking you can just wake up and attend the classes but when you dress up uh, wear the school uniform you're like okay we are going to school and we have kept the classes small like uh, class size is also small and the hours are also like 3 hours per day it's not 5 uh, or 6 hours and the rest of the time we are also recording the classes we are recording lot of content which is in the books our teachers are recording and uploading it uh, online so students can refer back to it and the questions kept in the in the videos so you know they know that okay the children are watching the entire video their screen time is also controlled and that um, physical interaction is also what we tried to retain so we tried that lot of things uh, which uh, you know lot of things which we thought couldn't be done online are being done but ultimately i think uh, we'll definitely look forward that students can come back because like the student uh, student teacher teacher have a personal relationship like from a physical class a teacher is able to figure out okay which student is lagging behind the which student is able to quickly learn also and they would throw from, chalk i remember when we were kids <laughs> yeah so that uh, personal interaction is very important and uh, students also you know they enjoy their childhood uh, when they are in school like they play around and they have uh, you know they have students from all over so this is the time they make real friends you know it is said that uh, if you are friend with someone for 7 years you become friends for life so school is that kind of a time when you make those lifelong friends and lot of learning is outside the classroom from others so these are the things which can't be done online and we really look forward that you know all the students are back but online will always continue to be an element because uh, when when students are uh, in summer vacations some online interaction can happen usually in summer vacation we lose touch with students so it can be other way around where you know we keep them in uh, touch with the school and also these recorded classes that we are doing is like a lifelong database where entire uh, textbook has been converted to online database to students can refer to it any time so we have taken the positives i think from this uh, disruption that has happened in almost every industry like we have seen uh, cinemas are being shut so you know netflix and this thing has come up so if we have tried to take the positives from the disruption we have had and uh, yeah that's it right and um, you know it's a very interesting uh, especially the uniform part i i really uh, find it very insightful uh, dr nivedita you know one of the questions which we would like you to help us navigate through is that how do you maintain that level of uh, you know engagement and some of the softer aspects which riyansh was mentioning that you simply just cannot replicate those water cooler chats just hanging out uh, you know outside the uh, whether it's a traditional classroom or even if you are a management school or learning in a professional institution how do you replicate that experience and how do you help uh, you know learners to navigate that stress of not being able to uh, be in that environment do you have any yeah. tips which you can maybe share with, with because we have got a lot of learners here from from one of the right. management institutions here sure. yeah so i think uh, the world uh, beyond anybody's screen is completely different you know so uh, just uh, viewing or just having or gauging somebody's uh, uh, current experience or current state of mind um you know through the screen it's it's very difficult now because uh, all of us have gone through uh, several challenges 
I think everybody, I mean, nobody is untouched, you know, in the past one year. So there's been a lot that has happened uh, over the past one year, you know, and year and a half now. So of course, the world beyond uh, the screen is uh, very different for each one of us to understand, to assimilate. Uh, yeah, there's certain things which cannot be replicated in the online world, you know, because uh, yes, that physical bonding in terms of, you know, uh, the understanding non-verbal cues or uh, that uh, proximity that you know one shares when you know you just sit around a cafe or you just sit around uh, you know the corner of the institute and chit chat or maybe even uh, you know the bonding that you develop while bunking classes <laughs> for that matter so that cannot be replicated of course but yes i think um, a lot of onus or responsibility become comes on the institute as how they plan their sessions while i'm sure um, the assessment modes have changed wherein uh, you know uh, the assessments have become much more regular and uh, there've been much uh, many more uh, uh, sorts of assessment in terms of project work and you know case study analysis especially when we talk about uh, uh, talking from the perspective of a business school but yes i think uh, if there's an emphasis on uh, much more group work wherein you know uh, a part of it could be individual work and a part of it could be group work so yes we still have to break the barriers of the current scenario uh, and you know overcome the challenges and transform them into opportunities and uh, try and see how students could bond uh, even when they are connecting over some online group projects or you know running hackathons when they can participate in hackathons and come to a certain solution i'm sure there would be some sort of collaboration as well as a lot of conflict resolution that they would learn on the way so uh, there would be a lot of uh, you know uh, arguments uh, during the uh, during the project or during the hackathon so i think this is one way in which if the number of group activities that could be launched and could be proposed during the uh, you know during the uh, session or during the module of a certain subject and activities and uh, assessments are planned you know and how they could and they could also be a system of 360 feedback where students rate themselves as to how their behavior was during uh, the group project so i think that could be one way of learning and overcoming the challenges of uh, the post covid world wherein they can still overcome the barriers by you know bonding with each other over certain group projects and presentation hackathons so i think that kind of yeah right so you know moving from softer skills to the to the core uh, sort of technical skills uh, and i would like to hear from both you gunjan and shriyansh on this that i know gunjan for a fact that your current organization even does a lot of high stakes learning advanced level courses on some of the emerging technologies which is serious learning and for sure shriyansh you run the formal uh, school now how do you manage learning outcomes in light of whatever is happening and and what nivedita also talked about but at the end of the day uh, you know learner is here to demonstrate and deliver results and learning outcomes irrespective of whatever the situation is right so that's the bottom line how do you ensure that those results are still uh, delivered and also uh, you know how does assessment change uh, in such a scenario i mean we recently saw cbse cancelling board exams iit j shifting around dates and that's got a ripple effect in assessment in all levels of uh, education right and do we need a newer kind of uh, assessment model uh, both formative and summative which can uh, be delivered in this uh, new blended learning model so would want to hear your thoughts around learning outcomes and assessment uh, how do we restructure assessments uh, in this blended model so maybe gunjan ji you can start first yeah, yeah sure kartik this is a very interesting and pertinent question i think for all of us um you know we've all been facing different kind of challenges when it comes to online learning how do we teach effectively online um you know and how do we eventually ensure learning outcomes right so the eventual goal is ensuring learning outcomes and i think in my mind there are a few elements to this right um you know one of one of the elements is obviously the content right uh, i think both like your content your delivery and the technology or the platform that we use to deliver right these are broadly three elements and each of these elements require a significant change in our in our mindset in our in our thinking when i think we move from an offline to an online learning setup right um, and i'll and i'll take examples right and i think some of these we've tried to implement at hero wide as well but let's say for example if one was to pick up content as an example you know in a in a in a kind of a traditional classroom uh, content doesn't play a very significant role because it is more instructor led 
driven self paced learning is relatively lesser uh, mostly we use traditional textbooks um, um, you know in a traditional setup but i think in an online world the kind of content which you create that will actually engage the uh, student and that will actually ensure that the student is learning what we are set out to achieve for them right um you know some of those things obviously presentations i think many of us now have been using in classes uh, over the last year so that's of course become very common but um you know can we look at other interesting learning tools like you know multimedia animated videos which make the learning very interesting for students can we use something like interactive videos and interactive pdfs um you know which are again becoming uh, very common in the online world Uh, i think one more interesting piece is bite sized learning works very well in an online setup because your attention span is is actually not as much as you would probably have in a physical world when you're bonding with people and you know you can sit through a class for you know 60 minutes 90 minutes without getting too distracted but in a self paced learning where you're at home you're trying to motivate yourself to learn bite sized learning which are like you know 5 to 10 minutes of lessons on a daily basis could it be in the form of short videos could it be something in the form of flash cards where you know after a session you have some um, revision topics and you know you have a simple um, you know kind of flash card coming up you know five flash cards to revise that topic or after a session can you have a short assignment like a five minute quizzer right that you that you send out i think adding some of these components right in terms of what kind of content we are using to deliver and to ensure that the learning outcomes are there first of all is critical uh, second coming to the delivery right i think one one very critical learning for everyone over the year definitely is that self paced learning alone can never help right what you always constantly need is the faculty being there to guide you to mentor you and to help you achieve those kind of learning outcomes through the journey of this program right um, so i think of course then delivery how do we deliver um, you know in an online setup which is again very different from a typical one way lecture in an offline setup right um, you know can you have more interaction and you know like a flipped learning sort of concept where once you've asked the student to maybe you know those those nudges those that content that we spoke about now if somebody comes in um, what is that content comes to the class can our can our class can our session be a lot more interactive and a lot more hands on right something that we call for example even work along sessions right where everybody together you have a smaller batch of students and everybody together is actually working let's say you're working on a code and you're actually together working on a code so what we call as work along sessions right uh, can you make a lot of interactivity so for example you know by using tools like Uh, you know a drawing board um you know discussion forums breakout rooms so how do you use uh, some of those technology tools in the right way right um can you engage the learner with a lot of you know kind of virtual games um you know adding so something very interesting that dr nivedita did right which is basically uh, an interesting presentation and some cues in terms of questions in the middle right so how do you how do you kind of add those poll questions some interesting elements around that and of course i think i think some of those things for hands on very critical to bring in an element of virtual labs right uh, to ensure that all of this learning is actually possible online right and right. i think that the, the third element according to me is how do you use the entire technology piece and gamify the whole experience right so for example to achieve those learning outcomes can you break it down into shorter goals right in form of in form of modules in term in form of course outlines uh, and then use technology and gamification um, you know by rewarding students for finishing a task for using positive feedback having a leaderboard points badges a lot of those things then to ensure that those goals that they have achieved right are being set up and i think a combination of all of these things kartik in my mind uh, mm-hmm. you know having the right quality of content having the right qual- uh, quality of faculty obviously and also delivering in the right way using the right tools um, you know from a technology perspective to ensure that the learning outcomes are achieved by the end of this right and and shreyansh do you want to maybe add on that with your experience in in k to 12 yeah so any of the tools which are 
available online like zoom microsoft google all of them are really good and microsoft especially you can get very good uh, safety security in the classes that you do we are using a exams tool also where uh, the screen of the student is frozen and there's a online recording so we can properly monitor the student there's also a, a voting tool that we are utilizing where we can uh, pop questions on the screen you know so to check the attention of the students and then we get to know uh, what kind of answers they are putting in and in terms of future assessments i think uh, attendance should be a part of your total marks and uh, even the daily assessments that the students are doing that should also be a uh, constitute of it and overall we have seen the initial assessments that we taken that uh, student learning has gradually improved from the day one we were doing online classes versus 3 months down the line the kind of uh, like the results are back to normal you can say like uh, suppose a student was getting 70% marks uh, they are back to normal now after 3 4 months of online learning and uh, that is a very good sign that children are really uh, picking up doing the self study learning from others and uh, once these uh, short assessments and attendance these things are included then we can have a, a full picture of how the student is uh, uh, taking the information and learning uh, from what is being taught right and do you guys and this is open to all three of you do you think that in online learning there is also a a uh, issue of uh, you know how to make it more inclusive because um, let's say you know um, there is a learner who has got access to good internet and good device and he or she is able to participate better and i am let's say a, a good student as well but i just do not seem to have a good internet or a good device at my home and i am always um, in a patchy network zone i don't have a proper place in my home infrastructurally available to be able to engage without background noise and what not do you feel that it sort of uh, creates some sort of a digital discrimination for lack of a better word just because i don't have access to that uh, infra i am not able to derive the maximum uh, you know productivity or output from the same level of learning which is happening for everyone so any reactions from any one of you Uh, so i don't know if i can answer that karthik but uh, apparently uh, you know while i was just uh, putting my thoughts together for the webinar today i just happened to ask my uh, uh, you know 14 year old kiddo and i asked him that if i have to you know learn from your uh, perspective as to what are the challenges that you are facing in the current scenario so these were the top two challenges that he actually put across that one is uh, what about the connectivity issue and the other one was what about the teachers connectivity issue <laughs> <laughs> so he said what if the battery is low so these were the top two challenges that he said that what if you know the system is working properly or the connectivity is an issue so of course i think uh, yeah so i think uh, uh, something that i could bring into the table uh, bring on to the table is uh, you know a lot of uh, compassion that needs to go in uh, from the facilitators perspective so of course uh, you know uh, so while uh, something that i just noted down some uh, you know for the previous question as well and i think that blends into this question as well that uh, the facilitators and teachers have to step into the shoes of more of a, a you know mentor uh, where um, it's more to you know develop the students rather than to be uh, judging and assessing them in the current uh, scenario i think while assessments are is definitely a critical thing but the whole idea should be to uh, you know uh, develop the students or mentor the students so i think uh, yeah so just uh, that that i think could be one of the solutions where in such kind of discriminatory issues of whether somebody is having a good internet speed or uh, you know or uh, other uh, device issue should not be a challenge that's my perspective hi gunjan shyam you know in, Sorry, interestingly actually. interestingly karthik while you were asking this question my network became patchy <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was uh, quite a coincidence out there but it's a real challenge it's a real challenge it's not only a challenge for learning i think it's a, it's a challenge for all of us who are also working from home um right because um, because i think we have to deal with it but i think the only thought i have kartik again like you know like nivedita says not, you know i don't have a real real answer or a real solution here but i think the only thing which can be done in the learning setup 
is by supplementing it you know with certain aspects around it right so um you know let's say for example little bit of self paced learning you know some cues being sent out later after the session maybe a recorded video being sent out after the session right so in case uh, in case a student had any issue in in attending that class so because of network then they can go back and you know kind of look at the recorded video um, later on or or learn through some notes presentation whatever we can use um, you know to kind of supplement that learning i would say right shreyan so in our school i think earlier people were using it as a loophole that you know network is bad so i'm unable to attend but now we have made it mandatory that everyone we have told the parents that all the students in this term need to have dongle and uh camera needs to be on throughout the class to get attendance same for teachers we provide them the dongle some have also got these microphones and blackboards to assist them in the uh, taking classes and government of rajasthan has started an interesting thing of rural uh, online learning they realize that uh, rural children especially have been missing out and they don't have access to online education so now they've called all the parents and they're sending them uh, whatsapp links to different lectures and teachers are going to different villages like where the students students are not coming to school but the teachers are going and solving their doubts and are clearing the doubts in small groups so rural learning has uh, started again which is a big good thing in private and other schools uh, people have realized that uh, it is important to make it mandatory that the cameras need to be on and so we we do face network issues but uh, uh, it's it's being resolved now i think to great extent since we have been in this uh, online learning for 2 years now right and i'm just going to uh, in the interest of time take some audience question as well in last 10 minutes or so so one of the things and i relate to this question so kavya is asking that uh, you remember right a few years ago if you had done an online course or an online degree it didn't used to have same level of uh, sort of authenticity or people wouldn't give it the same level of weightage right if you were a traditional degree awarded learner or a student versus a online course or a digital certification but fast forward 2 years now things are changing so i would like to hear from you and and maybe gunjan since you are especially in that space of um, you know also making people more employable and and then dr nivedita can also talk about it that how uh, has that changed and how is that going to change and you know a lot of people uh, talk to me that should we enroll our uh, you know child into a completely online school will that hold good in future or will people look at our um, you know child differently so do you think that that differentiation would still remain or lines have completely become blurred now and it, it doesn't really matter yeah interesting question um, i think uh... definitely uh, a lot has changed over the last few years um, you know few years back one could not never imagine doing an online uh, degree or an online certificate um, you know this is a concept which has come in largely in the last few years and i think industry has now started really adapting to it so and i and i'll i'll give the best example right the one of the best companies globally google has now classified and clearly called out saying to us certificate is not going to be important we will only look at skills because eventually the skill is what is important for me let's say for example you know you may have done you know a btech from whatever tier xyz university right um, xyz university but if you don't have the skill set that i require for this job role does it even make sense for me to hire you right and hence slowly what is happening and this exactly goes back to my first point uh, karthik where we were talking about upskilling that the job roles are moving so fast that now the skill sets have become more important than the degree because it doesn't matter what degree you have but are you prepared for the skill set that i require as an organization today let's say for example a lot of startups want to hire full stack developers right uh so that because they have a relatively smaller team now they want that this person should be able to do my app also my website also my back end also my front end also right but originally traditionally the kind of job roles which were there was there's a back end developer there is a separate front end developer 
Now startups are looking at it very differently. They want a full stack developer out there. So can like for to them, what it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It matters that if you have the right skills to actually perform the job, right? I think that's that's exactly what the industry is looking at today because they are struggling to find the right skill sets. They are struggling to find people who are coming with that kind of experience. And many companies are spending a lot of time in uh, in actually training recruits. You know, so freshers, they're taking so much time to hire them only because of this reason that the skills they are coming with and the skills that the industry requires are different. So I think it has changed, Karthik, and next few years it is it will change further. You know, it this trend has started globally and it will it will come to India where many of the many of the industry players will realize that a uh, skill is more important than certificate. No, absolutely. And I think I was reading in some articles that a lot of big fours and consulting companies have already started saying that we don't care what degree do you have. Uh, we'll just look at a skill based assessment and, and, you know, irrespective of your background yeah. and degree and pedigree, um, you know, they're not going to discriminate against that. So I think that's a good development. Um, Dr. Nivedita, uh, since that's also one of your mission in life to make people more employable. Sure. Do you have anything to add? Yeah, so I slightly uh, kind of differ from that uh, maybe degrees and uh, percentiles and you know CGPAs don't matter uh, maybe from a different perspective because uh, uh, if we are uh, addressing a huge uh, you know community of students out through uh, you know throughout through this uh, forum then I think uh, uh, what I often tell uh, you know uh, uh, as a visiting faculty to some of the institutes that I teach, you know, that uh, one of the roles of a student is to learn. So, uh, of course, uh, what matters here is that if there is a structured learning module and uh, if there is, uh, so of course, uh, why skilling is definitely very important wherein you learn the skills on the way of, uh, you know, of um, completing a degree or a certificate course or a diploma course. But then I think uh, focus towards uh, earning good grades is essential because uh, that's what is showing your uh, uh, dedication towards any one activity. So as a student, I think uh, it has to go hand in hand wherein you upskill yourself, you learn the, uh, you know, the secrets of a particular or the skills of a particular job role that's required. But I think that uh, textual or that conceptual knowledge again goes, uh, it becomes very critical. So I think uh, one, uh, since, you know, most of the audience that we have is student. So of course, I would not want to pass on that message that I think, uh, you know, your degrees and your certificates don't matter or the content that you're being taught that taught is, is doesn't make any sense so i think uh, it goes hand in hand where uh, you know uh, why is the content or the uh, you know or the textual information that is being or you know the uh, the education that is by being passed on to you is equally relevant but you also pick up certain skills as gunjan just mentioned through various programs and through various uh, you know at this moment yes through various online program uh, online modules so i think uh, both of them go hand in hand so it has to go certain extra way one has to go certain you know a uh, longer uh, journey going for a longer journey wherein you imbibe those skills on the way while you're completing your degree and your certificate so i think yeah that's my opinion right thanks dr Nita. one of the questions which is asked and, and maybe shriyan you would like to take it as and since you already mentioned about one of the initiatives of rajasthan government is how to address this uh, you know rural population because a large part of this population does not have access to infrastructure uh, whether it's network infrastructure or devices so tb based transmission is one of the ideas which mahadevan one of our audience member have suggested and then maybe uh, volunteer visitors like health visitors uh, and you know you were mentioning about how teachers are going in the communities to teach but how scalable and sustainable is that model, uh, Shreyansh? And, and do you think technology can help uh, in some way? So rural uh, students will need help of uh, private sector in terms of CSR going towards smart classes being put up where uh, lectures can be given in their uh, vernacular language so that they can pick up skills. And uh, this could have been done last year also because two years they've missed out and it's only now that rural uh, learning for rural students has started. We have also donated a lot of books of our students uh, to the to the schools around us so that they have the access to books and their teachers can uh, go to them, meet them and discuss so that they can continue learning. 
so some help from private sector tv transmission is also a great idea so a lot of them have access to tvs and phones also now and transmission through youtube whatsapp uh, also works as they have uh, phones and uh, this uh, this like this uh, effort which will be put in from the private sector will be very helpful in the long term which can also improve the infrastructure that you know if five years down the line we have something like a war or something and again they have to go back to online learning so from now only the rural uh, infrastructure for education can also be brought up right thanks shreyan and uh, we are almost out of time we got 3 minutes left so i'm going to request 1 minute to each one of you just to summarize your uh, you know uh, learnings for all of us that if you are a learner in today's world how should we prepare ourselves for what they say this jazzy word vuka world and how we can be ready to face this uncertain world and how our learning can be reshaped any tips tricks under 1 minute each so we can start with punjan i think uh, i think first i i kind of empathize that it's it's very difficult to be a learner in the current scenario um, you know there are a lot of challenges that everybody is facing in terms of you know how do you really pay attention how do you really learn you know in in an environment you're not meeting your friends there is no social interaction so i think it is very challenging and um, you know let's accept it um i think what we really need to do is um, you know a lot of these things that we've all spoken about together you know uh, both the learner faculty i think the interaction understanding each other um you know kind of empathizing with each other and and kind of putting that effort that extra effort which requires i think at both ends right um um you know to kind of ensure that we all go through this because this is a very very tough journey for i think everyone um you know in the in, in the current setup so i think it's kind of critical that that we kind of set goals for ourselves i think as a learner like i said break those goals into shorter goals and then try and try and achieve those goals um you know by of course uh, talking to your faculty interacting with your faculty um uh, you know kind of um you know basically ensuring that they help you in this journey right because uh, i think i think that is critical yeah keep calm and and move on sort of a thing so <laughs> shayansh over to you yes uh, so we used to do a lot of uh, career development and skilling in college so that has come to schools now that when you are in school at this time only you can start uh, figuring out what you are good at what you want to do in future and add at least one skill whether it is coding or uh, any hobby which you can later take on as a career so these extra things have to be brought on at a much earlier stage rather than when you are 25 it has to be done at uh, maybe 12 now 12 or 15 and that can really prepare them and make them much ahead uh, when they move uh, forward and the, the kind of uh, demanding environment that they'll be facing when they come to the job world or entrepreneurship thanks dr niveta to close the session Sure. Final remarks. Yeah, so I think I'll uh, you know answering to your question. I think again I'll start from where I started. Um, you know that uh, adapting uh, becomes the key. So we never know what uh, the next decade is going to show us. And uh, I would rather say that uh, uh, you know we uh, we are very thankful. full that there been always uh, there, there was such um, you know uh, there was such technology that was available uh, even pre uh, covid you know so, so thanks to those uh, uh, people who invented zoom or who invented ms teams who probably uh, intuited you know that there would be once one such scenario where uh, we would have to probably depend on it entirely uh, as i i don't know how uh, what kind of a world we would be living in if we weren't uh, you know dependent on such kind of mediums so i think uh, uh, you know uh, depending on your intuition and of course uh, uh, learning on the way and learning through our environment and learning around us through whatever mediums through our peer or through our you know families or through uh, you know uh, through the structured modules that we have i think uh, learning and adapting remain the key to i think uh, move to the next uh, level of uh, uh, life i think all right uh, thank you so much with this we are at close of today's session thank you so much for joining us uh, gunjan lal chandani ji dr nivedita shrivastava and shriyansh bandari we are extremely grateful uh, for you to spare this time with us and i am sure our audience members from 
the amount of uh, chat, I have not seen such an active audience uh, in in any of the sessions prior. Really great to have such a participative audience. Thank you so much, audience members for joining in, and thank you the entire IMA secretariat, uh, Rajni, uh, Sanjay ji, and and Rekha ji for setting this up. And uh, special thanks again to Shishadri Puram Institute of Management Studies, Bangalore. Uh, we have got such an enthusiastic faculty and students uh, joining us from there. And we will see you next week with another session uh, of uh, IMA YLC. Till then, stay safe. Uh, and once again, thank you so much, all the speakers, for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Karthik. Thank you, everyone. It was thank a lovely you. evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.